Lee Cheng Soon, happy to be able to roll out on a Widowmaker here, I'm sure, and Greenleaf's not looking to take the head to head against that. And we saw a lot of Widowmaker play specifically on Ruin, so that's certainly coming back into flavor. Both teams are also playing the Sombra to start. We'll have to see what Tot is able to accomplish. We have seen 50 get a lot of mileage out of this Sombra. Thing is, though, 50 does just find himself under a bit more pressure just with how this matchup is right now. And there's not a lot of ground pressure for Li Chang Soon for the moment. I say that as he is kind of uh, assaulted by 50 there, but so far, though, pretty clean angles. Hasn't had a lot of damage up with though. Oh, nice catch on to Becky. And by the way, Green Leaves just through kind of sheer force of composition do get slightly better positioning around the point anyway, but Tot finds one back on 10 and Cyclone Coupling under a fair bit of pressure, the cap does come over the way of Green Leaves. And now the trades start to come in much harder. Li Chang soon does start to get a bit of work done, but aside from that, his impact hasn't been felt too much yet. And now you're in the world where okay, Green Leaves get this first cap. They were waiting to see, or rather, Cycling Company are waiting to see if they can get some picks out of Li Chang soon. They find one eventually, but Green Leaves not wanting to waste too much time, got quite aggressive there. 50's nearly onto the EMP tier, he already has one. That's a big one, they get the hack and the anti-nade onto Sonairo. Tot's also got an EMP already, but might not even need it for the purposes of this fight. That's excellent kill pressure coming out from Cyclone Coupling. Just, I mean, kind of muscling out Greenleaf's really nice target prioritization and a very cheap fight to recap the point. All right, well, Cyclone Coupling also still hold on to the EMP, now comboed up with the nano boost as well. They're coming up to a decent ring of those ultimates. 10 now swapping over to the Tracer instead, and for Green Leaves, wanted to play more of this flank game specifically. Okay, Snow now also onto the Winston. They want to put a lot more pressure onto Lee Chang soon. They want to make sure that he isn't going to be able to have that kind of long range pressure that so far he has been able to get. I also like the swap here for 10. Xerophius, fraction of a hair ahead of recall in terms of the ultimate charge, but probably still neither going to have it before these EMPs come out. 50 actually doesn't get caught in this, so they could kind of EMP if they want. They also got a nano boost off, but. Unfortunately, Sonaro is still going to go down, and Becky also got the nano boost off, and so far, Fallen just having a bit more impact. Good wrap around to find Li Chang soon, though, so it is technically a one for one. Tot is able to finish off Cloud, though, so Green Leaves probably can't stick in this fight. They do find No, they got the picks here, and they do have the EMP as well, which they will connect now onto actually nobody. Yeah. And they still do have player advantage. That was their recommit tool. It's unfortunate to not get much out of it. This now kind of is a free sound barrier, one that just allows Cyclone Coupling to keep up some pressure here. But Green Leaves are starting to get more kills coming through now. Hashimi has come back on Brigitte as well. But already the pressure begins to mount. So Green Leaves barely leveraging the numbers advantage there, despite a bit of an unfortunate EMP from 50. And now Green Leaves, okay, catching up on terms of in terms of objective here as well, 10. Doing the work here to kind of pressure out Li Chang so you can see the pressure is notable in that Li Chang soon isn't able to get as many frags as possible. Was a weird EMP commit that now puts it back into the, I guess, field of cycling coupling for them to use into the next round coming in. Sitting at 66% is going to put them further into the lead if they can win off that. Li Chang soon has got really awkward sight lines down here. We'll be able to get some good shots on Scenario though. It does help keep pressure on him, but aside from that, there's not much he can do. Fallen. Trying to get aggressive onto Cloud. Does it be a little bit wary though? Anti heal plus a stun could find him dead. And he sort of takes a fair chunk of that, has to back out. He gets one. Arrow's opportunity to go in. The EMP from Tot, probably not enough here. Now 50 gets his shot. Having to put a lot of healing into Sonairo though, but he has not gone down. Now the EMP out of 50, and he's able to make up for mistakes previously. So Fallen goes down, recall under a lot of pressure. Greenleaf's now rounding towards 90%, still ahead in this fight. And they still have ability to use as well. There's not a lot of comeback potential for Cycle Coupling, that might especially not if they're losing two members. 50 just waiting to press the advantage, and ooh, does uh, stop that pulse bomb there, MG able to prevent that one. But honestly, I think the damage has been done between 10, 50, and Sonaro, putting so much forward pressure down. 10 does go down, but no one can get... Oh, I lie. Someone barely gets the point in time for Cyclone Coupling, but still in a really tight spot in this fight. A lot of low members. MG looking to get d as well. Recall still hasn't been healed just yet. Li Chang Soon's really the only one looking healthy and having a potential for impact in the fight. Tot now as well, but even then, Green Leaves just have way more to lean on. Nice biotic grenade landing onto Hashimi. Allows Tot to finish that off. Recall needs to commit this. We'll get the sound barrier out, but... I still see Green Leaves in a good position here, potentially, at least until Tot can get an EMP. That could help close it back out for Cyclone Coupling. Is it going to be the retake? Uh, 50 wants to prevent this one. 10 is on a oh, first try and get something Tot. done. Really quick there from MG to keep Tot alive, allows them to get their EMP off. Otherwise, I think Cyclone Coupling would have been done for. Instead, they're able to barely hold on and scrape through. 
And our green leaves, they still have a decent amount of time to play with. We're only 70% for Cyclone Company, but we need to see some more ultimates come online because EMP was committed by 50 earlier on. 10 probably will look to change heroes as well. Might actually stay based on 43% for the Meteor Strike, but no, it's got to go back to Tracer instead. Nano Boost is available for Scenario to get some work in, but this will be the last fight for Green Leaps. A good pulse bomb from Lee Chang soon with the percentages it is. Oh, Scenario barely chops down and avoids that. Just going to say a single pick at 85% can just be the map for you, but Green Leaps a lot to make it up for still. Hack on the Cloud as well, just to delay that Nano Boost from coming in soon. Finally throws it out. Lee Chang soon actually eats some chunks there as he's trying to go hunt a killer onto Cloud. And the forward pressure now coming out. Lee Chang soon in a bit of trouble still. Fallen pops primal. Sonaro has been able to get his off as well before being hacked. And the hack still kind of leaves him a sitting duck. Good bump on MG though. That's also a self destruct taken off the board. And they're starting to just overwhelm Cyclone Coupling. EMP comes out of top. But this time he's too low to finish it up himself. MG isn't alive anymore. Lee Chang soon can't do enough damage on his own. And Green Leaves look like they have a lid on Cyclone Coupling here. Very hard board, all things considered, across Ruins. And it feels like we should be further than just one stage in. But Green Leaves will get the first map of Ilios. Really close though, 99 to 100. You gotta say, both teams had very good moments there. EMP is coming out on both sides. Some of them connected very well, some of them connected less well. Tracer's being played as well. And you gotta say, on, on this particular map, this particular round, DPS is definitely doing the work for Green Leaves, barely coming through towards the end. You, you like to be able to think, even towards some of the earlier places where they hit their own 99%, Cycling Company were only about 60 something. They got two kills to start with, they pressed towards the base, pressed towards the spawn. Somebody from Cycling Company was able to get the contest in time to get that next wave of respawners, get that overtime commit, and still able to take that fight over. If that didn't happen, Greenleaves probably would have had this a lot cleaner. I have to say, 50. He's probably breathed a bit of a sigh of relief here, actually, that he's now uncontested on the Sombra. He wasn't actually keeping pace. He, I mean, it was a slight thing, but he was constantly second to the EMP in terms of ultimate charge. Now Greenleaves gets to roll out something a little bit different, and we also see Cyclone Coupling without Jackie don't seem to want to go into Farrah just yet. Well, they're moving into, I guess, different territory here. They still have one of their DPSs from their earlier roster, Lee Chang Soon, from the season anyway, and Hitscan's been his number, and he's going to have a big job to do to shut down three of those DPSs on the Greenleaf side. It is arguably the right pick for it. Also has the Brigitte on the team with him. So there's definitely the crowd control to help keep 50 and 10 shut down. But it is still a lot to keep tabs on and the pressure can become overwhelming very quickly. Greenleaf's also able to get better positioning on the point. Allows them to get the first cap. You see the early damage on Cyclone Coupling as well. TOT got taken super low. Got hit with the Bionet. Couldn't get healed back up. So Cyclone Coupling back out of this one. And now Greenleaf's looking for the first round of ultimates. Becky is going to be first up to the uh, nano boost, especially now the cloud is dead. That's a trade one for one. Becky needs to decide where to commit this. Lee Chang soon able to finish off Sonaro. He's going to be the recipient of that nano boost. Needs to get the damage out. They lost recall and Sonaro got rezzed. They do have that option here. Green leaves 10 staying alive as well. Rocket Barrage doesn't get a lot done. Gets members low though and does keep pressure on. Now if they can hopefully finish some more members off, they dive in to find Lee Chang soon and. Greenleaves are staying ahead of the curve in this fight. Super well evaded by the Cycling Coupling members there. You can see TRT just shield bashing to the side. Unfortunately, surviving against the Rocket Barrage doesn't let them survive against 10. And the rest of Greenleaves will get this cleanup on the point itself. 49 now in the lead for themselves. And also 4, 5 nearly. Yeah, about 4 to 5 ultimates coming online for Greenleaves. Cycling Coupling still waiting for... First couple to come through, Li Chang soon now on to able to make it instead. This is looking pretty good for Green Leaves, especially when they've got the EMP, but Li Chang soon makes his presence known and 10 gets picked as well. Suddenly, Green Leaves not where they want to be. They do commit a race to Hoshimi, but 50 now goes down as well. No EMP. They've already committed the supercharger to this play and they haven't got anything out of it. This is not what Green Leaves were looking for. And they have an ult advantage where they should be really leaning into this, but because they lose so many members, they're not sure whether this is going to be value for them, whether they actually want to commit or not. And no pressure on the Lee Chang soon, unfortunately, which yeah. means he's free shooting. He just kind of got the drop on about two or three members there and the rest suddenly, I mean, not in panic mode, but certainly left reeling in that their ideal game plan was completely hamstrung. And now tier 2 back on the Sombra as well. He's going to get two for himself on the way over to the EMPs. 15 now has one still available from the previous engagement. Greenleaf sitting at 90% is good though. That means that when they come in with this big string of ultimates, they should be looking to win off that push alone. If that doesn't work for them, then they still got a decent amount of time to catch back up with Cyclone Coupling only on 20 right now.
Fifty is again looking for this play, but has to kind of wait out the Empress Sight from Li Chang soon and just give Cyclone Coupling a little bit more time. Also time to charge up more ultimates. Tier 2 in particular has his own EMP coming up soon. You can see Li Chang soon now taking a bit of damage as well. This is the option for 50 to go in. The Infrasite's down and Li Cheng Soon was forced out of position just a little. Recall does get a nice sound barrier off, but MG does still lose the mech. So Cyclone Coupling lean on ultimates again until that EMP comes online and they'll still be playing into a numbers deficit. Probably wouldn't want to commit it at this junction now. But, is nice, but Cyclone Coupling are down in members. Big problem is the Kaipa is about to go over 99%. Fallen. No one touches in time. And Fallen tops the Primal Rage. Got two kills and it still wasn't enough because he had to go off the point for those kills. So nicely done on the whole by Green Leaves. And you can see it towards the end. Okay, Hoshimi's on the side, kind of having his bit of a duel over there, but uh, being hacked out as well. But a lot of focus being taken away from the point. And as the timer takes over, a really nice camp by Green Leaves to put pressure back on the objective. That doesn't happen then the game plan for Cyclone Coupling is still pretty effective where they're able to find out those individual members, they're able to now charge up their own ultimates and the first couple of ults being used by Cyclone Coupling or rather by uh, Green Leaves, not as effective considering the EMP and Supercharger didn't do too much, but what it did allow them to do that ends up winning the game is capture that point uncontested and then never to be contested again, unfortunately. I think on the whole, Green Leaves just felt a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more clear on what their game plan was. I think Cyclone Coupling, they made a nice adjustment on well, but even then it, it sort of got off to some resounding success, but it was still only a kind of a flash in the pan success. You didn't see Lee Chang soon get a 3K in the subsequent fight after that. Green Leaves reacted well enough to just not let that happen to them twice. And on the whole, like after Ruins, it did feel like Green Leaves were just a bit of a pace ahead of Cyclone Coupling. Yeah, I think it's a surprise factor as well. It's like you don't know the Widowmaker is there. He gets Until a couple of kills. Being shot in the head. And then unfortunately that becomes a problem for you. But once you do realize he's there, they're now playing around it properly. Yeah. Ashimi's actually taking cover now, playing better angles. And and they lose one cap over the course of, well, recap the one pretty soon and take us to 100. So now one on the board for them, map two ready to go as well on the assault game modes. Let's go ahead and check that out. Welcome to Hanamura. This is assault. Two teams face off as either defenders or attackers. The attacking team has a limited amount of time to capture two objectives. First A and then B. To capture an objective, the attackers need to stand within its range for a set amount of time. Defenders can delay capture progress by also standing in range. To resume capture, the attackers must force the defenders off the objective by any means necessary. If successful, they score one point and gain additional time on the clock. Now the fight moves to objective B. If even one attacker is on an objective when the clock runs out, the game enters overtime. This extends play indefinitely until either team is cleared away. The round ends when the attackers capture both objectives or when time runs out. Teams switch sides each round. Whichever team scores the most points wins. Back onto Volskaya for map number two here. And again, the Green Leaves taking the early lead, two and zero on Ilios as well. And Getting the kind of, I uh, wouldn't say dominance yet, but getting the kind of um, hold on the series you would expect them to, as we now call the favorites going into this mm -hmm. particular match. And for the side of Cyclone Coupling, not quite comfortable. They're reasonably competitive. Some good moments from some individuals there. But at the same time, at least on one map, don't seem like they have the capability to win just yet. They also don't seem totally out of their depth, just to throw them a bit of a bone here. We are, you know, you also question how well are they going to be able to keep up with the uh, the massive change-ups they've had. You know, it's the entire support lineup plus a whole DPS player. And, I mean, TOT on the Sombra was definitely present. Unfortunately, outside of that, relatively invisible. We didn't see a lot of mileage out of the Brigitte, but also not the right matchup necessarily to see lots of mileage out of the Brigitte. The support seemed perfectly adequate. So what I will say for Cyclone Coupling is like, they're not getting totally yeah. outpaced here, but they do just need to kick it up a little extra notch, especially I think in the overall read on your win condition and your opponent's win condition. I also think what's impressive about Green Leaves is they didn't need to change up their game plan all that much where you can see, even though there is a McCree, Brigida comp on the other side, 
And that is a known quantity. Okay, that's the, that's the we would call the bash bang combo, right? They have the two stuns there. But at the same time, um, if you are green leaves, typically that would not be the kind of comp you want to run into if you're playing Forest, Sombra, Tracer. Yeah. Those kind of heroes are going to get picked off by stuns and long range and hit scans and all that quite easily. The fact that they survive against that, force a change onto the Widowmaker, they do lose a round off, or they do get a lot of picks taken away on that, but also they come back and they still win subsequent rounds, yeah. keeping the fire and just kind of shifting their play style, adapting to the changes made on the other side without uh, without just throwing out their own game plan. Yeah. Shows a lot of confidence and shows a lot of, I guess, um, good execution on the side of Green Leaves. And like it's, it is that adapting on the fly part of it as well. It's you know it's leaning into other things that the composition can do, even if it's only temporarily just to steer you clear of that particular situation. Then maybe you swap later. Turns out it was successful enough that they didn't even need to get to that swap later part. They were just able to still out execute. And what you would have felt is on balance the less favored team comp just in that kind of one to one how they square up. And I don't think it's necessarily a miss execution issue there for Cyclone Coupling that you know, wasn't allowing them to unlock the McCree and all that jazz. I actually think just Greenleaf's played it well. I also think for Cyclone Coupling, they never quite found footing for Lee Chang soon, especially yeah. on the McCree. You could tell they were hiding behind in the uh, health pack room Green quite a decent really amount as well. And, it, you know, you, what, where you really want to be is you want to be kind of fighting slightly off to the point near where your entrance is to the actual capture point, putting your wrist shield down, having your McCree just sit down behind the shield and mm. Just shoot away at the fire into the sky or wait for Sombra or wait for Trace or wait for somebody trying to attempt to flank, land both your stuns on them, guarantee yeah. a kill, and then just move on from there. But they kind of never got there because the range that uh, Green Leaves were playing at, they were always just out of reach and just pressuring back and just putting in enough damage that unfortunately for Lee Jang Soon's second coupling could not sit behind the shield had to go hide inside a building, and that yeah. never worked. I also quite liked the patience demonstrated there, actually, by 50 and 10 on the Sombra and the Tracer, because, like, you're exactly right. You've got the McCree set there. The Brigida's kind of playing bodyguard, right? Just waiting for one of either the Sombra or the Tracer to go in for a kill or some kind of damage. They didn't bother with that. They went, okay, look, we can keep him pressured at least without having to make ourselves too vulnerable. It doesn't mean you get a lot of kills. And you saw them actually cap the point to begin with without even getting a single kill. They just got members low. They landed mm. good biotic grenades. They, you know, sprayed a bit of damage in onto the right members just to keep the pressure on without necessarily diving into finish members off. And it's very cautious, very patient. And I think uh, it showed a lot of very talented restraint. And it's a very different sort of way you need to be playing the matchup versus, say, if they were playing versus the 3-3 GOATs where you couldn't just get early point pressure. It's going to be the GOATs team that are going to be running into you. Yeah. If you're the Arista on the ground, you're in a lot of trouble. You have to basically run away. But this is the case where they recognize, okay, both teams kind of want to turtle behind a shield, but the cycling coupling shield is a lot more important in this case where they really need to find a good position to, in this case, bunker up. But yeah. for the case of Greenleaves, they just don't need to play their play style. So finding the right damage and the right members, like you mentioned, and getting that first cap as well, them being able to be defensive after that, and quite hard for an Arista team to push back in, definitely felt like Suck and Coupling were on the back foot ever since that moment. I think coming into Volskaya as well, I, I'm sort of half expecting Greenleaves to be relatively successful for what it's worth. Does feel that way? Certainly, I have a hunch. Um, yeah. And a lot of that comes down to their compositional options. This does feel like, honestly, quite a good meta for Greenleaves. Like, they are one of those teams that can quite confidently pull off really any kind of team comp as required. And mm. we are starting to see some limitations of certain teams in what they can and cannot run. And yep. A map like Volskaya Industries is exactly where that gets exacerbated and... Definitely. Well, good heavens, would you look at that? Greenleaves have all so, capped. So, Greenleaves cap with five... I, well, they capped straight after this, I believe. So, what was that? Cloud got a nice sleep. They push in. It seems like they snowballed. A, I assume, was very successful here. Uh, this is started the, the fire as well. Ability, by the way. Well, really, what, what this is, is, they would have probably had to change after this comp, but... <laughs> I mean... What you see from this kind of comp is it's great for taking A. Usually you don't push into B with it unless you're snowballing. Yeah. They did get that snowball in there. 458 is That's a impressive. big time bank. And Cycling Coupling really, by the looks of it, didn't get to defend. Unfortunately not. I mean, you also saw just as, you know in the replay of that particular passage of play with the sleep, you actually saw what else was available. I believe they had uh, they had a pulse bomb. They had a rocket barrage and an EMP certainly. And, Honestly, those on their own can be enough to win a fight on B points just with how the enemy yep. has to position defensively. So really no surprises there from Green Leaves. The question will be, can Cyclone Coupling measure up to it? 
You also have to think that like, Cyclone Cutling had ults coming up as well. They had a primary range. They had stuff available, but obviously not enough to defend. Ten is actually going to be sniping now on the Widowmaker. They are in some ways expecting that the possibility of a fire was is going to be possible for Cyclone Coupling. However, Jackie, as we know, is not on the lineup here. So for Cyclone Coupling, it's going to be a ground base 3 2 1 Sombra Goats. We are going to see Lee Chang soon returning to the Brigitte as well. All right. And this is because TOT is playing the Sombra. You, if you want to play this kind of composition, somebody still needs to be on Brigitte. So the only other person to be on that is going to be Lee Chang soon. Again, I like this DPS setup from Green Leaves. It feels just relatively flexible. You know, Cyclone Coupling could pull out a lot of things and Green Leaves could still find a way to handle it. 50 took a big risk getting up to 40% ult charge, but he's well ahead of TOT now. I'll tell you what, double sniper for Green Leaves does mean they're not gonna be able to contest the point very well. Hashimi in trouble as well. Ooh, yeah, goes down. That is rough because they lose the spam damage and also quite close to the Dragon Strike, but they at least trade with Fallen, so there's slightly less pressure now that can come out onto 10, and they can still res. MG eats an anti-heal and is gonna get DMX, so Cyclone Coupling just kind of lose all of their tools to put pressure onto these snipers. The res is extremely important as well because you can't really be waiting for a respawn. Not with Cyclone Coupling having their own spawn board so close to this point itself. Getting cloud down here is actually a big deal. Yeah, hack into the middle of the fight though. 50 committing that one out. And unfortunately, Cyclone Coupling at the closer respawn and Green Leaves kind of hurt for healers. They lost Cloud and Xerophy. So the rest of these members just kind of end up being sitting ducks on the point. Nicely done by Cyclone Coupling to sort of bait Green Leaves into the long fight. And honestly, that was, like you mentioned, a long fight because it was technically one engagement, one attempt from Cyclone Coupling. They waited for respawns. Very smart plays by Recall to push members of Green Leaves onto the ground. You want that bunker to be in an advantageous position if you're playing double sniper. Because they're now on the ground, that's not where you want to be for Green Leaves. So they get flanked around the sides and they yeah. lose that point. Now Cyclone Coupling get to push in with EMP ready, available to go. Only a Dragon Strike available for Green Leaves, which really isn't good enough. Ten sprays a little bit just for the sake of spy checking, but doesn't find TOT. He is now well in position and nicely coordinated with Fallen as well, who is right onto the backline as that comes through. That is still a one for one, though, so this is where it starts to favor Green Leaves. They have the closer respawn plus DMAC on MG. Could still go either way, though, with Sonaro so low. There is still a res for Green Leaves if they need to commit it, and Sonaro would be a good target. At least takes Becky down before he dies, and then the res comes in predictably. 50 nearly close to an EMP as well, but it does look like Cyclone Coupling are on the cusp Big bio. of force back, especially with that fire grenade. Sound barrier is the last thing they're going to be able to bring to bear. 10 able to slip out by the skin of his pearly whites while Fallen gets picked down on the front line of the fight. Green Leaves had held on for the snowball play. And Cyclone Cyclone Coupling will be quite happy to see some more ultimates here from Green Leaves, but I think they know as well that Green Leaves have definitely won this engagement. Stagger onto MG as well, who has been demicked. We'll have to probably look to jump off the side of the map or go back to spawn. Losing ult charge and Green Leaves now holding on to that B defense, meaning that they will secure the greater time bank once we get there, assuming we do get there. You know what, actually 50 going into the spray against MG, allowed MG to land like two pistol shots and he's able to get back in the mech. He was about 80%, so it was like right on the borderline there. So, uh, oh, big that, stick, nice stick. Able to just snipe Becky out in the rotation. Cyclone Coupling just has to wait for that respawn now. And that is really, really bad for Cyclone Coupling to kind of just lose on rotation in that kind of way because we said, look at MG, that, that stagger doesn't end up being much of a stagger because he gets to go back in the mech. Most importantly, he gets to keep that ult charge on the self destruct, which he soon gets. And that would have been a decent fight for Cyclone Coupling to push in. You can sort of ult your way in against this bunker. Uh -oh. 50 then doesn't really want to have to use the EMP. But now you're in a space where Green Leaves are feeling the pressure. Sound barrier, rather, supercharger down early. Yeah, gonna have to use it now, unfortunately, losing 10 early. Nice EMP, though. It's only on the two, but it's not like there's really a support ultimate that can do anything about Still it. Still alive. That is pretty critical. And now TOT commits his own and gets a lot more mileage. Again, there isn't a support ultimate that inherently counters it, but it just keeps them at bay. Now 50 goes down, res onto Sonaro, and, ooh, nice sleep on the Fallen. Just alleviates some pressure, but Nano Boost onto 10 on the Doom Fist. They will be able to pick off Fallen for that, but he needs to get a lot more done now. Sonaro has been holding down the fort on the point. Huge hack on 10. Can't get out of the way of the self-destruct. Can't get out of the way of the damage anyway. It looks like Cyclone Coupling have been able to generate a snowball where previously there was none with that early pick onto 10 on the Tracer. They don't get as impressive a time bank, but they will cap out. They need to get back on this. There they go. 
And all comes off getting 50 down, uh, rather 10 down, super low, super early, getting actually off the map. Going with the 6v5, super charging down early from green leaves as well, just trying to get some extra damage and then a couple more kills come in. Fallen does not go down. MG does not go down. Those two very important members on the side of uh, Cyclone Coupling, living for the amount of time they did, was a big factor in Cyclone Coupling actually eventually camping. This was how that first fight kind of started to fall apart. You saw Green Eve's forced to ground, and that was where TAT was able to get a lot more done. Got the solo kill on Cloud and also pressured 10 significantly while the rest of Cyclone Coupling kind of dealt with Scenario and Co. on the point. So I also do want to comment about a minute and a half separates these two teams. It is still an advantage to Green Leaves, but on the whole, actually, this is still very doable for Cyclone Coupling. You know, one good defense separates this map. And for Cyclone Coupling here as well, again, importantly, you can see uh, this is where they lose both supports, and that kind of becomes the end of this fight as well, because you also have a world where there's no more rezzes, you see scenarios yeah. on the ground, and for a kind of bunker double sniper defense, being on the high ground is ideal in that it's much harder for Cyclone Coupling to contest. Also, TOT probably would have had to commit an EMP and not been able to save this one for this B attack. We did see the B attack ultimately not being that successful until later on, but you're right, look, 324 versus 458. Cyclone Coupling, you'd like to see, have an equally good A offense. So far, it's uh, oh, one pick they have to wait yeah. for. Poor Becky, can't catch a break. 25% for 50 on that pick as well, yep. so again, oh, just get some early into the EMP race. And similarly, on the first defense led TOT by about 20 to 30%. So same kind of situation here. Fallen got reasonably low there. TOT is quite low as well. So Greenlings have uh, doing some decent opening damage as the rotations start to come through for Cyclone Coupling. The hack on 10 is quite nice as Cyclone Coupling were committing to the rotation. It just kind of keeps them at bay, keeps a bit of pressure off. It means Becky doesn't just get necked as he walks. Oh, the Holt into Bio there is actually a pretty decent play there as well. Greenlings now. Might be looking to lose 10 if they're not careful. 10 barely staying alive, just getting pocket healed by Xerophy, but that does take Xerophy's attention away from Sonairo, but Sonairo finds himself not minding quite so much. They all fall back behind the shield, and Cyclone Coupling find themselves a bit too far forward now, starting to lose a lot of members, and now they're in a really tough spot. They can't really rotate out of here without probably losing members. They also can't just hang around and wait for respawns. Oh, they're in a court in between two places, unfortunately, oh. and they either got to reset or do something else. Two members go down. That is going to be Li Chang soon joining them soon as he's uh, just trying to get something done before he dies. I like what Green News did there, actually. They knew that Li Chang soon was a goner. They knew that he couldn't really quite kill Hoshimi if they were careful. So they just bided their time, they wanted to get as much time off the clock from those kills as the possible, and they did. Greenies have so many ultimates now, nearly on to six, it's going to be far more difficult for Cyclone Coupling to push in. Likely, you're going to have to see Cyclone Coupling dry push once, just to get rid of some ultimates, and then come back later. But later would be under a minute from now, Li Chang soon. On to the Genji, looking for a future Nano Blade, but that future is not now. We do at least have a little bit of time to accomplish that. That is a very nice EMP. Lee Chang soon finds himself without a leg to stand on. And Sleep on Fallen as well, who didn't get hacked himself, but it helps keep him out of action. It's only the one kill for now. So if Cyclone Coupling don't lose too much more, then this is honestly not too bad. They need to be careful to not lose any more members in the retreat. Ed Chang soon making more swaps still. Actually, uh, really big for Cyclone Coupling. We talked about this being a dry push for them. Four ults out of Green Leaves is a huge commitment. Likely you could have seen two ults maybe out of them. A EMP into a nano boost would probably be enough. But for Cyclone Coupling, now the ball is on their court. They have all their ults coming online pretty soon. Lee Chang soon, obviously, as you mentioned, swapping, not going to get his, but the EMP should be big enough. And for Green Leaves, no big defense. TOT to get detected, so he slept instantaneously. There is still a decent hack that connects, but they have to follow up without the likes of TOT, who also got finished off after that MGT mech fall and has just not got anything done down here. Does find Xerophy at least, and so there's still a lot for Cyclone Coupling to work with, especially again without the healers alive. These remaining members of Green Leaves really going to struggle here. 50 probably not going to use this EMP, I imagine. We'll probably just wait to use it for point B. They will start to gear up for that. And that's job done for both sides, in effect, because Green Leaves push this one into the overtime. Cyclone Coupling do eventually cap A. Still reasonably difficult. Cyclone Coupling also had to expand a decent amount of ults to do so. Good news for them is Becky will have another nano boost coming up. Lee Chang Su changing over to Brigida. 
Nano should be going on to Fallen as they push in. Only 30 seconds means one attempt yep. and one EMP for 50 to shut it all down. Now 50 has been, excuse the part of it, 50-50 on these EMPs. Some have been great, some have just not been enough. It's not 10 out of 10. Certainly not, but that is a decent one. He gets 50% of the team. Sound Barrier also finds 50% of the team, but not the 50 that was hatched out. It is a death on Sonairo, though. Nice stun on Xerophy. So, Cyclone Coupling have weathered the worst of it, and now they take precedence over the point. Cloud has a nano boost, waiting for Sonairo to get back into position. 50, barely giving TOT the slip. No, not quite. Does go down. Now they have to commit the nano boost. Whether they like it or not, good pressure coming down to the members of Cyclone Coupling, who now rotate into ultimate. Watch TOT. So still being pressured. Sonairo down again. 10's ball spot goes wide. Cyclone Coupling. It looks like the 30 seconds may have been all they need needed and they definitely make hay while the sun shines strong three and a half minutes proves to be enough for cyclone coupling it's gonna be a fruitful season for them in terms of that harvest of cyclone coupling pushing through in the overtime they will secure another time back you like to imagine green leaves can also make it with 458 on the clock which means this should be a pretty high scoring around on both ends but also for cyclone coupling it also means they're kind of out of time after this one it's a decent push into B. Unfortunately for Greenlee, he's not going to be able to get the mileage off of one EMP from 50. They have the nano boost from Cloud as well. There is a world where, to be honest, you'd like to see the nano being chucked onto 50 because he was on no HP. You put the 300 heal into him. He's back on full. He's able to contest again, and he's alive. That might have been pretty decent for them. Ends up waiting for Scenario. Pops on him instead. Greenlee just couldn't find enough trades. They just couldn't find the kills, despite staying alive for a bit longer to actually force the overtime. Let's be real though, five minutes, plenty of time. And if they can cap with more than a minute on the clock, then Green Leaves will only need to get a third. Cyclone Coupling will not get another opportunity to attack. So this is still winnable here for Green Leaves, but certainly Cyclone Coupling by fully capping do keep a lot of pressure on Green Leaves. Because again, one good defense separates this. One good defense on B is Greenleaves not actually fully capping. And Greenleaves, uh, without a doubt, in the lead. We, we said that going into the first time bank. You have a lot of faith that they will get into the second time bank now. Once we do get there, you assume they'll have a lot more time than zero, which is what's on the side of Cycling Company. We're now going to be starting out for them. Double sniper comp. Greenleaves, Hashimi on the Farah. Probably will be looking to slot as soon as he sees this. I imagine so, unless they happen to get a nice pick to start with, but no, just wants to directly contest Li Chang Soon, who directly contests 10 in the head. And that's just one more respawn they have to wait for, so correction. And as uh, Nano Boost heals for 250, not 300, my bad. But Cyclone Coupling, either way, looking decent on this oh. first defense, 10 down again. That's another member you got to wait for, the same one. It's two for two on 10. Cyclone Coupling keeping the pressure on Green Leaves, who haven't even really made a rotation at this point. And, well, you want to say they've got time to play with, but they still got a camp B, and you want as much time for B as possible. Maybe losing high ground here could be an issue. <laughs> it's a wacky rotation from Scenario. Certainly took Cyclone Coupling by surprise, but didn't really get a whole lot done. Didn't even really bump enough members off well, the top. Well, they did, because Fallen's, Fallen's down happened. there. If they get Fallen down, everyone has to follow them. Fortunately, that is the most important member. Lives if it's up. just him, that's enough. Lives up to his namesake. Looks to rotate back onto high ground, but this has given Greenleaves an opportunity to get in position around the point. Fallen also super low still, so if Scenario can keep pressuring... Look at HP. ...when he's dead, it's a one for one. Not a great one, unfortunately, for Green Leaves, because they still haven't done anything about Fallen or Li Chang soon. This is a low ground bunker now, which is not nearly as effective as the high ground one. If Li Chang Su can maybe even the odds here by getting a couple more picks nearly on the infra side as well. Nano boost available for uh, for Becky and for Cyclone Coupling. They are still holding three strong. Not a single tick from Green Leaves. Oh, Leaf that's really big again. Scenario looks to make the play, but gets slept, gets finished off, and now they're kind of maybe even waiting for a Dragon Strike, something that's going to displace them, that Dragon Strike belonging to T.O.T. Oshimi goes down to the rotation, Greenleaves look lost. Greenleaves need a reset here, they need to get either more picks to be able to contest in a player advantage, or they need to wait for Hashimi here from a flank. 50 has EMP, they've got a lot of ults online, but they've got to stay alive. This is two Hanzos with Mercies in the pocket, just trying to have a one-on-one, -on -one. a headshot will separate it, but there's also the Diva there for Cyclone Cup, but there is none for Green Leaves. This is what you need to see the setup for, because the bunker is still somewhere, and you want to see that being broken by the EMP moving in, Dragon Strike coming through. 
plus the minefield. So Green Leaves are trying to use this as a way to get onto the point. But Cyclone Coupling, they don't mind. They're just going to rotate back onto the high ground that they wanted to be on all along. But catching TOT in the rotation. Li Chang soon also taking pressure in the rotation. 50 now lines it up, sets it down. Nice bump up into the air as well from Sonaro. Very clean coordination. Even though he got slept, the crowd control is enough and they absolutely hammer through the members of Cyclone Coupling in this room. Massive heads up play from 50 there as well, staying alive, pushing into the room, connecting on to Li Chang Soon, who was probably the last carry available to maybe turn things around. And now you're gonna see Green Leaves finally capping this point with about a minute 50 remaining. They're gonna get an extra 30 seconds to push into B with, and they are looking to have some type of time back time remaining. You do not want to go into overtime when you make this B push. Well, better yet, you want to stay over a minute. If you can stay over a minute, Cyclone Coupling don't get given any extra time. So that means there is about a minute for Green Leaves if they want to accomplish that. Difference between this and the first time they capped out, they do not have a great snowball push here. I also think Cyclone Coupling have a decent amount of stalling here. They can self-destruct. They have a supercharge for good opening damage. You're expecting Becky to get another nano boost. 10 goes ahead, throws out the Dragon Strike, does just displace Cyclo Coupling a tad, but they still need to dislodge a bunker here ultimately, and that takes time. And you're waiting for the EMP, that's the ideal way to dislodge Bunker 50, is low though. Sleep on Sonaro, so they can't quite make that same coordinated play as last time. Sonaro barely staying alive, the anti-heal really keeping a lid on him. Hacked again, down. goes down, Green Leaves are going to have to wait for the play. And this is unfortunate, okay, the res is available, it's a one res, that's the one time, but oh. that's in one member, you're not going to be able to get back up this fight. Yep, and I mean, they can still go without Hoshimi, but they decide they do not want to. It's not worth the risk. So, Green Leaves not going to be capping with more than a minute left. And actually swapping off the Widowmaker is a big deal. You don't really want to be playing Widow onto point B. Not the greatest sight lines available. It doesn't matter that Li Chang Soon is sniping. You don't have to counter snipe him. You got better plays you can make here. You can play other DPSs. He's got to go with the Hog instead. Want some staying power there. Wants to play the Hulk hook combo. Pretty smart from Green Leaves, but they really realistically don't have a lot of time to pull this off. So they got to play quick. And unfortunately, they lose even more time because can't jump. Li Chang Soon. Oh, well, that helps. Uh, helps Li some of them. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Li Jang soon also with the Infrasight slows them down because 50 can't commit to an EMP while it's running. So now only 30 seconds left for Green Leaves. And now the other side also has a bunch of ults, but TOT will have his own EMP. I think the timing is past, sadly. Green Leaves no longer have a big advantage. Looking for the commit. They get fallen on the ground. Three they commit the EMP. Ooh, 50 gets taken super low. Green Leaves trying to commit to this play, but a lot of members getting pressured hard. Cloud has a lot of work to do, as does Becky, strictly speaking. The Green Leaves have not found the picks they need, especially not from the Orisa Hog. Now five seconds left. They have to just start getting onto the point without having got the kills for it. Big and kill. this is going to be the one, no matter which way it goes, with Sonara already dead. Xerophy is going to try and look for a res. 10 hacked out. Does not stay alive. No one's on the point. Cyclone Coupling are going to even up our series, going to make this match very interesting. And this is where, okay, the upset sounds like, the upset seems like it might be able to happen now. Volsky in and of itself feels like a bit of an upset because you have a time bank that was a, uh, it was definitely a decent deficit in terms of Cyclone One Coupling it was minutes. to work with, but they were able to cap in the overtime. They had a reasonably successful A, about 30 seconds to push into B. I say reasonably successful in that they, they got A with not a lot of time, but going into B with even less time was the bigger deal. They were able to fully complete this cap, and for Green Leaves, unfortunately, they took so long to get through A yeah. when they had five minutes, when they had nearly just about five minutes to get through the entirety of both the, the, the points. They took most of the time just to do A, not enough time left for B. Sadly, uh, that's not going to be the cap for, for them anymore. Lee Chang soon and the rest of Vols, rest of Cyclone Coupling stepping up big time. Even that one big push for Green Leaves, you expected them to come through. Player advantage, EMP, there's not a lot of ults on the other side. It had to be that push, it had to be that play. Because they lose Hashimi, they decide they want to wait for the respawns. That was the push, then they come back and yeah. they no longer have advantage. And it's a bit of a shame, right? It's, uh, as I said, one good defense separates it, right? A minute and a half isn't that big. I mean, it's a lot bigger when, like, one team only has a minute and the other has two and a half. That's very significant because that's the difference between, like, one fight and, like, maybe three fights. But when you look at five minutes to about three and a half, I mean, 
I mean, the match result speaks for itself, right? Cyclone coupling, three and a half minutes, given the extra 30 seconds from capping A, is still enough time to fully cap out, and five yeah. minutes is still very holdable. So having extra 130 feels like you have a little bit more room for error, and look, they expended all of that room for error quite early, so they left and nothing. More. They left nothing realistically towards end, despite coming with more time onto B. Mm -hmm. They unfortunately didn't get to do much with that time because Cyclone Company get to set up so well for B that you were going to need so much more. You were going to need more ultimates, more pushes, more kills to come through from your own members, and then just even the picks coming through so important towards it. You see Tio T getting the hack on to, um, I believe it was 50 at the time, who had the Dragon Strike, couldn't then use it. might have been 10, actually, but one of the one of the players who was on Hanzo couldn't get to use the Dragon Strike then, the only ultimate uh, remaining. It was 10, yeah. Scenario went down fairly quickly. You wanted to maybe combo up the halt with the Dragon Strike. They would have secured something. Yeah. But losing the wrong members, getting the wrong members hacked at the wrong times, correct members being picked by the side of Cyclone Coupling means they get to win Volskaya. Also didn't really see anything come out of the Roadhog. I do think it was the correct call to make. I mean, when you're going into that more even fight, the extra pick potential from the Holt hook is definitely something that can pay off, but just didn't quite get the mileage they needed. Yeah, the, you know, it's maybe one fight left, so put everything onto the wall and see what sticks, but that is going to be half time now for us, one and one apiece on both sides. We're going to go to a little bit of a break, a little bit of a break but when we come back, we'll see what happens in this match. We'll see you right afterwards.